hit land, it would begin to, to disseminate, but at the top of it looked like this black fog, like a lake of fire. And the garbage was molten. And if you remember chemistry class, if you take sulfur and you burn it and you heat it up, it turns into like this goo, right? You know what I'm talking about? That little purplish looking stuff? That is what is, that's called brimstone. And so we get the idea of brimstone, the lake of fire, from the valley of Hinnom, or Gehenna. And it's actually a garbage dump that is on fire just outside the city of Jerusalem. And so when Jesus is talking about hell, what he's saying to the people is, you know what, the person that does this, it's like, it's like they deserve that. You can actually see it. So it's not like he's just throwing out this term of Gehenna. It's actually there, and the people know what he's talking about. Is that, that's, that's what they deserve. The Bible even says that there's a worm that, that bred inside the garbage that was able to survive the fire. It says that the worm never dies. It's always never, never, never uh, full, always eating. That's where that comes from. There was, there was a parasite in that garbage dump. And, and so this is, this is an object lesson. Does hell really have fire and smoke? I don't know. But all I know is what Jesus is saying is people that do that deserve that right there. And the people could see it. Gehenna for them was a place where everything that was filthy and useless was destroyed. It was a place where um, if, we didn't, if we didn't have a purpose for anything, that's where we took it. Um, it's a sad place. It's a synonym. That's why it became a synonym for hell for us. It's because that's, that's what God says. It's the things that, the things that aren't going to make it into my kingdom. That they're going to be apart from me. And that's kind of what it's like. I want you to keep in mind that Jesus isn't suggesting to us here. Jesus is not saying, by the way, I was thinking, if you don't mind, Jesus is telling us, point blank, these feelings, these attitudes are wrong. And clearly says that it's a bad thing, a terrible thing to destroy a man's reputation. And he says that there's no punishment that is too severe for people that are gossips. And for people that are going around destroying other people's reputation. No punishment is too severe. To Jesus, these are pretty serious sins. Very serious sins. Now you've got to remember that at the beginning he said, you've heard it say, don't murder and he's taken that all the way to don't even say anything bad about anybody. That's a long trip. That's a long trip. And that's going by the law and then by the law of love. Because the law of love wouldn't want me to destroy you or for you to destroy me. For Christ to put these things on the same level as the law was not only a bold and way of thinking, it was pretty brave. Because he's got all these religious leaders around there. And what he said was, the law is true, but what I'm telling you is equal to that. And I'm sure that ticked a lot of people off because they, they held the law in super high esteem. And you and I, with our tongues, we have the opportunity to bless or curse people. Either one, out of the same tongue. James 3.10 says, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. We, we shouldn't be one minute praising God and the next minute cursing God. We shouldn't be praising people and then cursing people. We should be blessing people. We also have the chance to encourage each other. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Encourage one another and build each other up, just like, in fact, you're already doing. Encouragement is a great thing. A great thing. I was watching the Olympic race last night, and these people are running around the track, right? And the crowd is screaming and hollering. I doubt anybody's up there yelling, Your shorts don't match! Your shorts don't match! What they're yelling is, Go! 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 People keep running when there's encouragement. People quit when there's criticism. You and I have the chance to support each other. Hebrews 3.13 says, But encourage one another every day as long as it is today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The tongue is a fire. But fire can be a good thing. I was out west. Uh, Thomas and I went out to the Grand Canyon a couple summers ago, and you could see where the forest fires had run through the national forests. And it was green. And I'm thinking, that's weird. Because all we see on the news is fire, fire, fire. But if it doesn't go through every so often and clean it out, the ground can't be purged of all of its impurities and have the, the things, the nutrients that it needs to grow again. And it comes back. And Alex said to me a couple weeks ago, he says, you know these wildfires we have in Florida? He said, they're a natural thing. It's our houses that are in the wrong place. We're the ones that's in fire's way. Fire's not bothering us. Fire can be a good thing. 
You see where they got the fire out in California and it's burning like this and they went and started a fire over here so it burned that way so that this won't burn. Fire can be a very good thing. Maybe today you have words that you would like to take back. I don't know how you can do that. Because your life's not a DVR that you can rewind. It'd be great if it was. Maybe you have words that you'd like to find the courage to say. Maybe you have some resentment or an anger that's been a part of your heart way too long. Holding on to resentment is renting somebody in your heart space for free. Because it's not hurting them at all. It's only hurting you. Maybe today you'd be willing to let it go so you can be free. But you need to know this. James 3.8 says no man can tame the tongue. Because you can't tame your tongue without surrendering your heart first. You, you can't just say, I'm going to stop, unless you're going to change your heart. And the good news for you today is, we can have a new heart. We, we can have a new heart. But you got to want it. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will and form it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. God, I pray today you give us the courage, the determination that it takes to yield our heart to you. And that one of the ways that that would be seen and understood is by the way that we talk to each other, by the way that we communicate with you, by the way that we communicate at work, at school, or wherever else we might be. God, we ask today that you would uh, do a miraculous thing. In Christ's name, amen. I'd like you to do something for me. Um, I, don't, I don't do this very often. But if, if something today kind of hits you between the eyes, I want you to tell somebody. You don't have to tell me. Tell your spouse, tell your best friend. If you don't have one of those people, email me or call me. Um, and here's why. In the next three weeks, especially next week, the Sermon on the Mount takes a very weird twist. And it's going to get very, very intense for about the next three or four Sundays. And if you don't have a new heart, you're not going to be able to withstand the next three or four weeks because the teaching is incredibly direct. And I, I guess what I'm saying, this is kind of like your last chance to get ready for the game, <laughs> okay? I mean, I mean, we're warming up, and we've talked about beatitudes and attitudes we should have and heaven's perspective on this, that. Last two weeks ago was about, you know, unless our righteousness exceeds the Pharisees, you know, we're just religious people. You know, well, today is about getting your heart right because the next, it's the next three weeks or so are really, really hard. In fact, I'm not going to lie to you, I almost skipped them. I was going to skip it because it's so difficult for me personally to go through some of this stuff. If, if something hit you today, tell somebody. Just tell somebody. Just say, hey, PT said something today, really got me, I need to pray for me. That's all I have to say. Um, email me, we'll have a little electronic conversation. Uh, I'll meet you for a cup of coffee. Uh, today I'd meet for something cold to drink because it's very hot. But but let's let's can we be serious about this? I mean, as a family, seriously of being people who have hearts that are being transformed and minds that are being transformed into the image of Christ. That, that's what this is about. And, and and so just you you do business with God the way you do it best, and and, uh, and, and we'll walk together through that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, um, I know it's a busy time of the year and lots of stuff going on. Everybody, you know, vacation in and out. Uh, appreciate you being here. Appreciate your faithful uh, support uh, for the church financially. We're going to receive the morning offering at this time. Which we'll <laughs>